what I'd like to do is show you guys how to find the x and y intercept uh, of a, say, let's say a, a linear function. I'll just say a linear equation actually for now. But these two are going to be functions of this equation for them. So, first thing that we're going to go and look at. Um, if I'm going to go and look at here, what, what does the x and y intercepts uh, mean? Well, first of all, the first basic <coughs> definition that you guys need to understand is when given a graph with an x and a y axis, or what we saw like to call like the coordinate plane, what you have is you have your y axis, which goes up and down, and your x axis, which goes left and right. So when we're saying intercept, what we, we want to ask is where is that line, where is our graph going to actually intercept the graph? Just like a defensive back will intercept a pass, the pass is supposed to be going somewhere, if the guy intercepts the pass to go ahead and catch it. So, uh, where is this, where is this, this, does this line cross this y-intercept? And what you guys can say is, well, it crosses at 3. But what equals 3? What is it that actually equals 3? Well, this is what we call the y-value. The y-value of this equals 3. So you can say y. <coughs> We'll say, uh, <coughs> here. so the y-intercept is when y equals 3, or as a coordinate point, we know that a coordinate point looks like this, x comma y, correct? <coughs> you're going to plot your x point first, and you're going to plot your y point second. So if I want to write my y-intercept as a coordinate point, my x value is going to be 0, and my y value is going to be 3. Now, let's go ahead and say I say I want to find the x-intercept. Well, the x-intercept is where this graph crosses the x-axis, which is this line right here. So when I'm looking for the graph to cross the x-axis, what I need to next go ahead and do is I need to go ahead and say, um, could you girls please move? Please move over to one of those seats, please. That's huh? move, please. That's not the notes, right? Huh? It's not the Move. Move. Okay. So if I want to find the x-intercept, it's going to be I'm looking for where it crosses the x-intercept. Now it doesn't cross at one of these at one of my tick marks. What I see is it's one, two, and it looks like it's right in half, so it'd be two and a half. So I can say it crosses when x equals two and a half or two point five. Now if I want to write this as a point, I would say that the x-intercept is at the point. Well, x value is two point five. And my y value is going to be 0. And the one thing you guys, the main important thing to notice about when you're dealing with your x and y axis, axes, is whatever one axis, if, it, if your y intercept, your x value is 0. And your x intercept, your y or your um, y value is 0. So you always got to remember if it's crossing the line, one of the x or va y values is going to be 0. So right here, my x is 0. There's, I'm not going left or right at all. And over here, where across the x-axis, I'm not going up or down. It's on the line, so the value is 0. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. All right. Now, if I, let's say I'm given a table. A lot of times you'll be given a table. And given a table, you're going to, again, have to go and define what is going to be the x and y intercept. Now, the table is going to make it a lot, e lot simpler. Because in here, I gave you guys what the two zeros are. When x equals 0, that's going to tell you what? That means my x value is 0, so that's going to tell me what my y-intercept is. So it's very simple. You can look at it and say, oh, well, x equals 0, so therefore my y-intercept is y equals negative 1. So for here, I have to say y-intercept is going to be at 0, comma, negative 1. Why do I know that? Because I know my x value is 0 at my y-intercept. So therefore, that's it. Excuse me. And if I wanted to find my uh, x-intercept, I know that at the x-intercept, my y-value is 0. Notice the 0 there, the 0 on the coordinate point. So therefore, my x-intercept is when y equals 0, which is 1 half. All right. Now, last but not least, let's say we're given an equation. And if given this equation, ax plus y equals 12, and I say find the x and y intercepts, 
You're say, all right, Mr. Bungle, I kind of understand with the graph. It's just where it crosses the axis. That's easy. The table is really easy because whatever, whenever x is 0, that means I know what the y-intercept is. Whenever y is 0, I know what the x-intercept is. That makes sense. But now, what am I going to do with, the, with this equation? And I'm going to look at it. I'm going to say, all right, well, we have an equation. So we can plug numbers in. We can treat it as well, we're going to talk about functions here in a second. But what we can do is if I know that at my y-intercept is x equals 0, if I plug a 0 in for x and then solve for y, I can find out what the y-intercept is. So what I'll do is I'll write y-intercept and x-intercept. The y-intercept, my x value is 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in, like how we did evaluate at the beginning of the year, I'm going to plug a 0 in for x. <coughs> and then for my x-intercept, I'm going to plug a 0 in for the y, because I know that my y value is 0 at the y at the x-intercept. So therefore, I'm going to do 8x plus 0 equals 12. So now, it's just simple math. 8 times 0 is obviously 0. Y is equal to 12. The coordinate point would be 0 comma 12. For here, that's equals 0. I'm going to have to divide by, I'm going to have 8x <coughs> equals 12, divide by 8, divide by 8. And you can go ahead and divide. You're going to get 4 thirds. So x equals, I'm sorry, 3 halves. If you add the top and the bottom by 4, you get 3 halves. Therefore, the coordinate point for this would be 3 halves, comma 0. All right, so that's three different ways how to find the x and y coordinate of a linear equation or a linear function.